Well, I'm so excited to talk to both of you because I've been a fan of uh, Clubhouse for a while, and you guys have just had one of the, the biggest events uh, on the app. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with you, Don Marie. You uh, premiered this all-star cast and crew reunion of the critical acclaimed, I mean, the cult following of the TV series The Shield, starring Michael Chiklis. And who else was part of this thing? Oh, gosh. Sean Ryan, who created the show uh, and ran it. Um, also, Glenn Mazzara, who's in this interview with us. Um, I mean, just everyone showed up. Everyone showed up. Um, I assume you, I, I know you produced a lot of stuff in the past. What was it difficult to produce this? Since this is on the Clubhouse app, it's audio only, you know. Was it difficult to produce because it's audio only? Oh, that yeah, was the I mean, it's, part, it's obvious, it, it, I feel like it had to be different than other stuff you've worked on in the past, you know, so. Well, um, sort of, because, you know, with it being COVID, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, you know, we're not able to get together and, and person. So, you know, meeting virtually is, is like the thing to do. And so since I've been spending some time on Clubhouse, which is how Glenn came to the conversation, uh, you know, I thought it was only, you know, right to get us all together. Very cool. Well, well Glenn, what did you think when Don Marie first pitched this app to you and ultimately led you to this shield reunion uh, over this virtual fireside chat through the new technology? Well, Donna Marie has been active on Clubhouse. So she initially called me and said, you know, this will be a great medium for you, you know, that, that you know, because I'm I just love to have a microphone so you know, voice people listen to me. So, um, and we started talking about it. And then she said, how about a Shield reunion? You know, and I said, well, that's always fun. You know, I mean, the Shield was such a great place to work. And, and it was such an intense experience for everyone working on it that we really are like family. I know that feels goofy. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that. But, you know, we all have a great deal of love and respect for each other. So Donna Marie just, I said, sure, you know, I'll reach out to Kurt Sutter and Scott Rosenbaum, who are two of the other writers. And then Donna Marie reached out to Sean Ryan, the creator, and Michael Chiklis and CCH Pounder and Dave Snell and Catherine Dent and Benito Martinez. And, and we had some other, uh, we had two guys who had started as assistants on the show, um, Randy Huggins and Devon Gregory. Th those guys are now showrunners in their own rights you know so it was interesting to talk to them about their journey so and then and then we also had um the anthony uh what's the anthony's last name oh my goodness yeah the anthony parks who opened up the uh show for us he's yeah. from oh. we are dark angels yeah composer so, yeah. so he did some music and then we had who was the woman who was sort of helping you moderate and she would reset the room oh she yeah good job yeah, Adrusha, who she's amazing on yeah, Clubhouse. So. She's one of the top moderators. And we also had uh, Bumani X, who opened up the show. He's the face of Clubhouse. So if you guys Google Bumani X, you'll see like this handsome gentleman with like this amazing fro and holding oh, a guitar. I, I that was is wondering Bumani who that X. is. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was great. Awesome. What, what I th was worried about was that because I knew most of the people from the shield had not used clubhouse. So I thought it was going to be like, okay. Remember around ho the holidays where everybody's parents were trying to figure out zoom and it was <laughs> just a disaster. So I thought this was going to be a disaster, but I love Donna Marie. And I was like, great, let's try it. It'll be a party no matter what. And then just, you know, the way it was organized and put together and, and, and so well done, it was a great experience. So what I thought was going to be an hour or two, I, I jumped off after four hours. And how long did this thing go, Donna Marie? This thing went five and a half Man. hours or something? Yeah, right. it went five wow. and a half hours with Francis Fisher closing yeah. it out with us. It fantastic. <laughs> so it was it was just a, a lot of fun. And I've spoken to some people afterwards and everybody just had a blast. So thanks, Donna Marie, for putting that together. Really great. Oh, well, of course, I Glenn. I mean, he just you you made it so easy when when I, you know, mentioned it, you were like, Yeah, let's 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 Absolutely. do it. And that was the sentiment of everyone. That's what made it so wonderful, is that you know, there was no one resistant to getting together in like this new technology they really knew a little about if not anything at all uh, but they were just excited to get together and spend time together and I'm grateful that they trusted me to kind of 
rally up the crew and, and teach them a little clubhouse uh, 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 world, you know, as we went forward. It was really nice, really nice. Well, the, the amazing part is, I mean, you got all these people together and you mentioned a lot of them who were writers, showrunners, producers went off their, their own journey. I just want to go through quickly some of them, you know, Glenn went on to do The Walking Dead, Kurt was Sons of Anarchy, and then Scott did Queens of the South, Randy went on to Criminal Minds and Star. Uh, it was pretty amazing how influential yeah. not just this show was at the yeah. time, but then the way how it went off and created other shows, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ra Randy, Randy has uh, uh, created a show with John Singleton called Rebel on BET, oh. and now he's doing oh, Black yeah. uh, Mafia, Mafia Family. Um, Devon Gregory created American Soul. So it was, it was really interesting to see how I think the, well, I do think Sean, you know, you know, had a great eye for talent, you know, uh, you know, and I'm saying that about the other guys, not about me, but also, <laughs> but, but also um, just that one of the things that came out was how creative um how creative the environment was and how liberating and how there was just people were forced to always bring their a game and do their mm -hmm. best and and i think that really you know became part of the culture of the shield that then we all took onto other shows so you can see that that was a very driven group it was great very nice. Um, did you guys, uh, you said it just went on for like four hours. Did, for this question for both of you, was there like a favorite moment that really stood out um, during this whole clubhouse reunion? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to break three, four hours. <laughs> there, there, there were a lot of favorite moments, you know, but I, I think what stands out the most is, is just what I, I mentioned a moment ago, just being able to get everyone together, you know, via this like virtual fireside chat. You know, it felt like old times. It felt like we hadn't missed a beat. Uh, we were able to get into um, the core of the conversation, which it wasn't just, you know, to get the gang back together again, which that always feels good. But, you know, it was really like a conversation of like the whole scope of everything, like from, you know, the inception of the show, you know, and where Sean Ryan got the idea, you know, to create the shield, which came from, you know, the Rodney King beating and the um, LA riots, which really exposed the, you know, LA Rampart division. And so that's what the, the series is based on. So, mm -hmm. you know, I thought it would be an interesting conversation to, you know, talk about that, you know, um, like the show's inception back then, you know, throughout the season, you know, and, and, and how, you know, the show uh, you know, came together? And then is there a possibility of it coming back, you know, with a lot of shows, you know, making yeah. a resurgence? And then if it did, like, what does that look like in today's era of Black Lives Matter? You know, this week oh, we're absolutely. remembering Breonna Taylor. And so I thought it was like, a, you know, and, and all the lives, you know, that was lost mm -hmm. um, in, in the wake of just, you know, so much we can get into. But you know, I thought it would be a really good uh, conversation and Sean Ryan just really brought it, you know, he, he got into, you know, uh, the series Inception and just really took us down a walk uh, of how, you know, it came together, what it took to sell it, get it on the air, cast it, you know, Glenn Mazzara was the first one he brought on, you know, and so Glenn, you know, had a lot to do with, you know, shaping that first um, episode along with Clark Johnson who directed it. And so um, it was just a really uh, solid show, you know? And so to get us all back together to, to talk about the science of it all and how that would play out in today's Black Lives Matter era. And, you know, it, it was nice. Yeah. It was good conversation. Yeah, and, and for me, I think there were a few highlights, you know, there were, I mean, it was just great to spend time with everybody, but, you know, Kenny Johnson was also part of our cast and, you know, he told some great funny stories and you got a sense of the camaraderie, just the kind of, you know, mm -hmm. joking around behind the, the scenes or whatever. And then Kathy Ryan, who is Sean Ryan's wife, she also acted, you know, and she was saying how, how challenging it was for her at the time because she was, you know, finding her way and she didn't have, wasn't as established as maybe some of the other actors. And she was worried mm -hmm. that perhaps people thought she just, you know, got the job because of, of her husband and, 
and and she was also pregnant at one point. So so it was interesting that there was this, you know, CCH Pounder also said something. So it was interesting to kind of hear a lot of the women speak about how what a difficult place it was to work, that there was a tension. And, and given where we are today, say after, um, you know, all of the different social awakenings we've had to just kind of look back and say like, wow, okay, what was that like making that show back then? And, and, and you know, it, it was just a little bit of old school, you know what I'm saying? And, and probably yeah. like guys were, were, you know, acting very, you know, macho and testosterone driven and, 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 and now you would be more sensitive and you would be more collaborative and more inclusive and stuff like that. So I, I could see how that was difficult for people. Mm-hmm. So I, I sort of came away with, I, 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 there was some, something to grow, you know, to come mm-hmm. away, some growth to come away with. And then my highlight, if I could just say, was, yeah, you know, please. Randy Huggins was our writer's assistant. <laughs> and the first question, when we went to the audience, we had, you know, I, I, DM can say how many people we had. I know we had over 2,000 at one point. Yeah, right? 3,000 uh, revolving, yeah. So, so wow. when we went to questions, you know, you've got all of these, you know, renowned <laughs> actors on, on set. And the first question is for Randy Huggins. How can I be you? How can I, you know, uh, follow in your footsteps? And that just made me so proud that he was a guy who was our assistant, you know, and now he's a showrunner and people want to know his thing. Nobody wanted to hear from us. It was great. And so, so that to me was the highlight that the first question was for Randy. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> I thought I, I, that was the highlight. That That's was so great. Cool. Yeah, he well, was also a, a fan of Randy. You know, Randy is, um, uh, the name of the show is uh, Black Family Mafia. He's he's uh, okay. creating that with 50 Cent, you know. Um, oh, but he's yeah, fresh off stars. of Power yeah. and, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah, Power and, and Stars. He's been really doing his his thing. And he told the funniest uh, <laughs> stories too, Glenn. So I'm still laughing at yeah, a lot he, of those Yeah, he's got the best part, so it was great. Yeah, was just he was a hit. He was a hit. I love it. Well, uh, I do have to ask Glenn because uh, last Friday was the 19th anniversary when The Shield first premiered on FX back on March 12th, and mm-hmm. yours 2002. Uh, I have to ask, where were you when you watched it? Probably back then, on back in 2002. Do you remember watching it for the first time actually on TV? <laughs> that, that is a great question. No one's ever asked that. Um, I don't remember i i don't remember i remember we had a premiere party and the premiere party it wasn't that night it wasn't the premiere night it got out of control everybody got drunk i think i hit walton's car somebody fell off a fence uh, uh, like it was just it was just nuts but um i don't remember actually watching it i will say that the next day okay i remember this i had forgotten this until this week the next day all the executives came to the set and we thought we were going to be canceled right there, uh-huh. that we had done poorly. And they went to set and they announced that we had ratings that were much better than they ever expected. They were considering us a hit. They were so proud or whatever, you know, and it was just this, this electricity shot through the crew because everybody felt like, yes, we felt it was good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and some of the early reviews people thought it was good but we were getting slammed one of the things about the shield was it was uh it premiered after 9-11 you know a few months mm-hmm. after 9-11 so cops were hero sean spoke about this the other night so the idea to do something about p- police violence and police brutality and police yeah. corruption was against what america wanted so here we were so so people were saying this is really offensive you know, to tell the story mm-hmm. now. And then when we put it out there and people responded um, and saw that there was, there was, we were really trying to say something, um, we just felt accepted. We felt validated. We felt that, you know, yes, the world gets us. You know what I mean? And that continued, especially until, you know, Chicklis won his Emmy at the end of that season. But that, that was a big moment. That was a big moment. Wow. Well- that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, question for both of you. What, what's next for you guys? Um, anything in the works you're allowed to talk about or anything you're working on? Bonnie Marie, you got anything? 
Um, yeah, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I am really excited about a dramedy that I sold into development. We have um, some amazing talent attachment. Hopefully we'll, we'll hear some more news about that soon that I can actually speak on. Um, yeah. But a few things in, in, in development um, and I'm looking to do more fun stuff in Clubhouse. So, you know, the Shield was like, you know, the first big, you know, um, you know, deal that I've done, you know, under Clubhouse. I started my own club. It's called Donna Marie Presents. And, you know, we'll have intimate conversations there. You know, um, I'll take people deep behind the scenes of my uh, background in the industry. I'm a creative director and development executive in Los Angeles, California. So I've worked, you know, everywhere in the business from broadcast networks like ABC, uh, for almost eight years. And then I headed up development for Steve Harvey overseeing a slate of 40 plus projects. So, you know, I've, I've done quite a bit. I've met, you know, a lot of people. And so I, I plan on bringing some of those conversations to Clubhouse. So, mm -hmm. so we'll see how that goes. And you also have your company, Undeniable Films, right? That you... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is where, you know, my, my dramedy is going to be coming out from under, you know, in partnership with a few others that I can't mention right now. Um, it's actually the first project that I was, you know, I had to sign the confidentiality agreement, but I'm really excited cool. about the talent attachment. And, and I think everybody else will be too. Okay. Undeniablefilms.net for yep. shout out there. So uh, Glenn, anything Thank you're working you. on? Yeah, I have a few things I'm working on. Same thing, but you know, it's 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 all in development. Um, I I will hopefully have something to announce in maybe about a month, but I, I just can't say anything. That's something I'm excited if it comes together. But you know, right now I'm just I'm just writing a lot. I'm actually working on a script right before this call, and just. Um, you know, it's, I've, I've been lucky. I've been able to, to develop a number of different projects, you know, so, so you know, I also do horror, I've done fantasy. Oh. So I've been able to kind of, you know, scratch a lot of itches <laughs> during this time. <laughs> I and, love horror. And, what's that? Yeah. It's, I love it's, horror. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I just wrote what I hope is a very good scary scene for something. So cool. uh, we'll see, but I think, I think as far as what gets into production right now, you know, the marketplace is sort of, you know, I think uh, figuring itself out after the pandemic. So yeah. I think I have something that's going to come together, but I just can't announce it quite yet. But thank you. Absolutely. You don't want to jinx it either. So, <laughs> right. well, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I also hope this clubhouse bring, hopefully brings the shield back. Maybe I think there will be this day and age. It could really tell some good stories. And well, we'll you know, go. Sean, thank you for saying that. Sean said, you know, he'd be open to it if we could, one have the creative team together and everybody's off in different directions yeah. um and also to hit that high bar you know we really did stick the landing so if 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 there was something more to say instead of you know just just you know kind of putting it together for the sake of putting it together so but it, i, I what was great about the clubhouse was he was interested he used to say he used to always say no and donna marie got him to Say he was open to it, so maybe there's a path. Oh, we'll say. Donna we'll Marie, say. good job. Well, we'll say, yeah, she's got some magic. She's got some magic, so. All right. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much, and uh, take your time for your busy schedules to talk to me and uh, giving us my pleasure. Thank you. Us.